Well, EA College Football released their top 10 toughest places to play. Did they get it right? We're going to take a look on today's episode of The Crowded Booth as Will Manis joins me. We're also going to give our own rankings as well. Without further ado, here's The Crowded Booth. Pile in here and make yourself feel at home. The Crowded Booth is coming on. The Crowded Booth with Bryce Coon. All right, we welcome you in here. My name is Bryce Coon alongside Will Manis. And, Will, we are just three weeks away from the release of the new college football game. We talked about it a couple weeks ago. Could it be the best sports game ever? Uh, Go check out that episode. But, Will, obviously this is a big content week in terms of what they're going to be releasing. And uh, first off, they released a list of the top ten teams. Before we show it, or the top ten, not teams, the top ten places to play, top ten toughest places to play. Before we show it, I just want to get your overall just reaction to this week of content because I believe we're going to get team rankings uh, by, on Friday, which is obviously massive, massive news that everyone's ready for. Yeah, that's obviously what everybody's wanting to see. But, um, <clears throat> you know, they're – they're doing a really, really good job keeping the hype up for this game. They're they're spacing things out, I think, at a at a really good pace. So just keeping everybody excited, keeping everybody on the edge of their seat, waiting for this game to come out. Yeah, Will and I have not fired up and with the show in at least a month. Um, ever since that initial trailer kind of really dropped, I haven't. We've just been uh, piddling around, uh, waiting for this game to come out. And it's going to be a lot of fun. Pretty Make much. sure you stay tuned Pretty to the much. channel for that as well. So let's take a look here at the kind of – the list that was generated that received a lot, a lot of fanfare, uh, Will, and I'm going to bring it in here because I, I think that there's some things on here. I understand why they did it, but but Will, there's a lot of criticism of this list, you know, from yeah. other podcast hosts, from national college football writers. Your thoughts when you look at this, some of the things that just stick out to you. Well, so, you know, obviously they've got to – they can't play favorites. They got to try to not have any bias here. So that and they're mm-hmm. they're going across the whole country, and you know you see our list. I think it's not really going to be a surprise to anybody. We got a huge bias toward the southeast, um, but you know I think it's pretty balanced. Uh, you know they gave us kind of their formula. They factored in winning percentage at home. They factored in the volume, um, capacity, things like that. So you know some really good ones on here. I like that Wisconsin's getting love. Camp Randall jump around going into the fourth quarters is one of the one of the great traditions. Florida State is a sneaky one. You kind of forget how loud Dote Campbell Stadium gets. Uh, unfortunately, the last what five, six, seven years, Florida State hasn't really had those big home games uh, to get excited for like that. Florida, same thing with them. Ben Hill Griffin Stadium, same thing with them. Uh, just their lack of success, especially to their standards the last several years has is probably the reason why they're further down on this list. But um, I'm very interested to hear more about how they put Kyle field at number one. I know you've got, you've got all those people you pack in there, but it just doesn't have that same feel as some of these other places. I was talking with some LSU uh, writers that covered the LSU A&M game the year before I got here. So 2022 uh, it was. And I said, what, what, what did you make of it? Like this list came out. What'd you make of it? They said from an intimidating atmosphere, it's not necessarily intimidating. Like there, there's a lot of people, like you said, they, they, they pack it out. But one of the biggest things they said is like the way the stadium is constructed now the press box actually sways because there's not like it, it like you move you can feel yourself moving in the press box because it does get so loud but from an intimidating atmosphere and a lot of it has to do with stadium construction that's going to be something to yeah. that you know how a stadium is constructed um is going to play a massive part but no i mean just kind of follow up what you said a- a&m is not even in my top 5 um of, of just toughest places to play and I don't think I don't believe they're in your top five either. Now that's not getting me wrong. I would love to go to a game. I'm going to go to A and M this year. Hopefully, I can be proved wrong. Two of these SEC teams are not in my top five. Uh, Florida's not in there as well, really for the reason that you kind of just spoke on is when Florida is right, that's probably a top three atmosphere in the country. When they're not right, 
I don't know. We're going to see. And I hope I get proved very, very wrong uh, this fall and, and be able to watch a fun game in there as LSU goes down there. But look, I mean, you know, I'm going to have a little bias towards the team that I, I cover full time and the fact that I, I'll just say it. I, I've got them number one. We're going to get into our rankings in here in a second. But your 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 biases, plural, <laughs> key, key word there, plural, biases are biases on play in your top five. Yes, on my, in my top five. Yes, yes. No, they are. They are. I just and you know, you know I'll, I'll go ahead and address mine. And and I think <laughs> there, it is. there uh, it is. I think you feel the same way. How is Auburn not in the top ten? I I mean, have they never been there? Like, have they not paid attention? Because this probably won't be the only time I say it. You were there in 2017 for that Georgia game. I was there for that game, and then the Alabama game. The New England Patriots could have rolled into Jordan Harris Stadium either of those weeks, and and they were not going to win yeah. that football game. That that's that, how that's Auburn's whole calling card. That atmosphere is. Yeah, it's Auburn's yeah. whole calling card. It is like we may we don't know what we're going to play like on at you know on the road, but by God, at home anything can happen. And the um, fans, the fans really rally behind the team. We're kind of jumping ahead here, obviously, but yeah, the fans, the fans do their part for sure every week at Auburn. At least at the they start do. of the game. Yes. We, we've seen we've seen plenty of games where it gets late uh and and things change. But uh yeah, I don't I don't understand how they don't have Auburn anywhere in the top ten. Yeah, I mean I would say this is just my my opinion. I think Auburn is a tougher place to play right now than Florida is. Like if they were to yeah. play right now, um, not against each other, but just in general, I think Auburn's a more hostile environment than what Florida is, uh, just in terms of you don't know what you're going to get at Auburn. Um, Chris Marler, Vern Funquist over on Twitter, he posted a clip of when the, the Cadillac game. I mean, I think that's what that game is pretty much known as now, like the yep. Cadillac game. You had two teams that had no business being in any type of primetime slot, but that was – were you there, Will, for that game? No, but I watched it on okay. TV, and I was, I was getting chills watching it on TV. Yeah. Like, that's – and there was a lot that went into that game. That's the Texas A&M game, uh, 20, what, 21, 22, mm, 2022. Um, yeah. It was, you know, Auburn for the last year and a half had just been like slowly drawn into a football depression. <laughs> and and it took Cadillac <laughs> becoming the interim head coach to uh, to kind of pull everybody out of that. And that is, you know, again, a top top five, maybe even top three environment I've seen. Yeah. in an Auburn game. And that was between two teams that were three and five whose seasons were over. Yeah. Yeah. No, you're exactly right. I mean, I think when you look at what when, – when you look at how fans show up in those moments, um, it obviously matters. It obviously matters. And other than that, I mean, I don't have a problem with all these lists. I saw a lot of people, and they're not in my top five. I don't think they should be a top five. But Oklahoma State was getting a little love from, you know, obviously some people. Uh, Boone picking Stadium over there, the Pokes. I mean, that's – that's another atmosphere I'd love to go experience just in mm-hmm. terms of that place can get loud. It's it's going to be interesting to see that place now with no Bedlam every year, which, again, yeah. is another travesty that conference realignment has, has thrown upon us uh, because I loved watching those games on TV and those those games at Oklahoma State, those people were, were rabid. Oh, yeah. No, that was a crazy, crazy atmosphere. And I think when you look – um, at two, you look at the bottom, supposedly these are subject to change. So like how we get roster updates, I imagine too, and I was reading some stuff, Will, and within Dynasty. And, we, and look, I mean, I've been streaming NCAA 14. Like your toughest places to play can change throughout the Dynasty. Mm-hmm. I imagine the same thing is going to be done here. And then maybe, you know, some updates to how teams are playing, updated ratings. Uh, maybe that'll happen as well. So that'll be something kind of interesting there to look at but that's the top 10 that college football 25 says and now we're going to get into kind of our or that's the top 10 we're going to get into our top five uh will i'll let you take it away with number five here let's um well you want to go one through five or one five through one since we both let's have go, the same let's cut yeah let's do five through one okay let's let's save it for the end let's save it uh, all right go ahead let's rock and roll your five my number five clemson uh, Memorial Stadium in Clemson, South Carolina. So my formula, I tried to do kind of the same thing they did. I looked at home wins, home record, and and capacity. So Memorial Stadium holds eighty one thousand five hundred. I think that's a strong number. If you if you're going to be on any list for toughest places to play, you got to be able to get the people in there. And I think eighty thousand is kind of the minimum. They are the lowest on my list, which is part of the reason why they're number five. 
Uh, but they have they they've got more home wins than anybody else on my list. Seventy two. Uh, you know, there's mm-hmm. a lot of factors in that. They play in the ACC. Uh, spoiler: my other four teams are SEC teams, so that's no surprise to anybody. We know we know where my allegiances lie. Um, yeah. So easier home schedules for Clemson than the other four, but you know it doesn't matter who you play. You got to win the games on your schedule. You got to win your home games if you want to be successful. There's a reason they've been in the playoff. They've won national championships over uh, under Dabo Sweeney since 2013 to to accumulate 72 home wins is a very very impressive number. And that place gets loud too. I mean, it, when I looked up and saw it was only eight, I said it's only 81,000 because that place can get loud. Yeah, no, I mean, and that's a place too. Like you said, they had that long home winning streak. Yes, the ACC is one of the weaker power four. Power four was the power five conferences there, but just you still got to do your job, right? Like, and I believe, I believe it was Pitt that upset Clemson, you know, a couple of years ago, or maybe even more than a couple of years ago now. And that was like a massive deal. It was so hard to win there, uh, and, and be able to kind of do that with any kind of style points uh, whatsoever. Like you were just hoping to get out yeah. of there. Not the so, real Death Valley, but that's okay. Yeah, some of their uh, last few years, notable home losses. South Carolina got them in 2022, a wild 31 to 30 game. Um, yeah, well, no, Pitt was at Pitt. Um, I think okay. the game you're thinking of 2021. Um, 2020, they were undefeated at home. 2022, their only home loss was to South Carolina. They were undefeated at home last year, and everybody talked about how bad Clemson was last year. Um, I mean, there's – if you look – just go through their schedule the last several years, there's a lot of years where they don't lose any games at home. I mean, yeah. they're, they're tough to play at home. So that's tough that's why I've got them in my, in my top five. No, I don't blame you. I, I don't I don't blame you at all. I, I, I do agree with you. I think that uh, Clemson is a hard place to play for sure. I don't have them in my top five, but I do think when you look at ACC teams, I think it's the toughest place to play right now. Yeah. Um, including Florida State. Uh, Florida State's right there with them. Uh, a place that received a lot of love and I think that is going to get back to it. And we talked about it, you know, last week on last week's show, Virginia Tech. Um, that place I think is yeah. going to be able to get back to. And, and it really I, I needs to be. That's a fun one. I was close to putting them in my top five. Yeah, that's a that's a really cool place to play. All right, let's go. I'm going to go to my number five now. And yes, I'm going to be showing my true colors of who I'm rocking with here. But this is an interesting one because I think a lot of people think of Georgia. And uh, I've been to plenty of games in Sanford Stadium. And I've been to games where it became, let's go pre-Kirby Smart era. Pre-Kirby Smart era, Georgia was a place where you know, the the, the high elites rolled in. Uh, they enjoyed their fine dining out there. Um, but then they came to the stadium and, and yeah, they, it, it was like a Sunday school. I mean, they would enjoy it. There was a lot of eighties rock being played in the stadium. And then, a, you know, you had your occasional one, Will, I apologize, the 07 blackout game against Auburn where, you know, the place that's, got that's rowdy. The best example. Yeah. You, you had, you had your, that's the best example of a Mark Rick era, like getting hyped game. Uh, you, so you had games like that, but then when Kirby smart got there, there was a shift. There was a change. I think it started with his first spring game when they packed out 90,000 plus, you know, for a spring game in Athens, Georgia. It was like 115 degrees. I was there for that one. Um, so, so you had some like you had some things like that. But this place has slowly become, I feel like, one of the top venues and toughest venues to play in college football. You go back, obviously. I mean, you look at what they did. They have the whole they have the longest active home winning streak in college football. I nearly missed a chance to three-peat last year. They have not lost at home since South Carolina in 2019, which is one of the most mind-numbing games to watch just in general as a college football fan. If you were a Georgia fan, it's even more mind-numbing. I mean, that was, that was that's just off the top of my head, one of the worst football games I've watched in the last oh, was, four or five years. I, Both teams I believe, were bad. I believe it was like the worst game Rodrigo Blankenship ever had. Like he, Neither he couldn't team get wanted to win that game. Life. No, no. So – yeah, and that was a Will Muschamp-led uh, South Carolina team, if I'm right. So, you know, you, you start to kind of look at some of the top places, and, and Georgia's kind of become that. I'll, I'll, I'll give you a couple atmospheres. Notre Dame, when they welcomed Notre Dame, that was an amazing, amazing atmosphere. Um, Missouri last year was an unreal atmosphere. Uh, one of the biggest complaints from, you know, Georgia fans and players is that we don't get a ton of home game, or we don't get a ton of home night games. Um, when they do, they pack it out. Even when they don't, they pack it out. 
Now yeah, you're going to start uh, falling into Arkansas. some fatigue, though. How about that Arkansas? Arkansas game a couple oh years my ago. god! They off to that hot start. I think they were number ten in the country at the yeah. time, and that was a noon kickoff. That's ridiculous. And you remember um, KJ Jefferson? They were within like their own seven. And they couldn't hear anything for a noon kickoff. And so I, I think that Georgia has slowly evolved from a Sunday school type of atmosphere to one of the tougher places to play. Now, that's also a result of the team. I mean, when you play yeah. a team that's amongst, you know, the top one or two, three best programs in the country, that's part of it. But I think this place is also the fan base is kind of with Kirby Smart, you know, jumping and, and taking the reins, they, they've really kind of gone along with that. I think he demanded more and they've demanded more and they've answered the bell. So I've got Georgia number five. Um, yeah, I there's think, a lot of interchangeable pieces that you could go at number five, though. Oh, for sure. But yeah, I, I think I agree with you. The uh, the change has really been Kirby Smart. I mean, the, mm-hmm. the, the team, the fan base has really taken on his his attitude toward what he wants Georgia to be. And that's that's honestly what every program wants everywhere in the country. That's that's what they want. That should be. I mean, I think we've said it before on the show. Georgia has become the standard now for yeah. for college football. What you want. Yeah. And I think just as a whole, like how you want to build your program, uh, people are trying to build it like what Georgia does. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, it's uh, this year's home schedule is going to be a lot of fun. Tennessee and Auburn are both going to come. I mean, that's going to be uh, it doesn't matter how good Auburn is or how good Tennessee is. Those fans are going to pack that out. They don't think Auburn's very good because that's homecoming for Georgia. Remember we talking about that? They yeah. all, all, Missouri is also saying, Auburn, you're going to be our homecoming. So that's that's what that is. All right, Will, it's no snake draft, so we're not going to go back to me here. We're going to go to your number four, segue right into a place that we've been talking about to kind of open the show. Yep, well, here's my biases. I got Auburn at number four. Um, everybody knows I wanted to put them one, but I'm not going to do that. I'm going to have a little bit of integrity here. Uh, capacity at Jordan Hare Stadium, 88,043. It has grown the last several years. Auburn doing more to expand the seating, the little bit that they can without major major work being done. Um, Auburn, 57 home wins since 2013. Um, you know, I already mentioned the two, the Auburn, the Alabama Georgia games in 2017, the games in 2013, the the prayer at Jordan Hare, the kick six. I mean, those are those are the highlights. Those are the four mm-hmm. top games ever there. Um, you know, going past 2013, I was there for the 2010 LSU game, the, the Cam Newton run that kind of won him the Heisman Trophy. I think outside of those 2017 games, that's the loudest I've ever heard during Hare Stadium. That game against LSU, LSU and Auburn, both top 10 in the country at the time. That was an LSU team that probably could have won the national championship, and, and Auburn – Shows you how good Cam Newton and that offense was. Could kind yeah. of do whatever they wanted to against them. Um, but, you know, we've talked about a lot. It's been talked about a ton. I'm sure nobody wants to hear me ramble on about it even more, just about how great the environment is at Auburn. Um, you know, when Auburn's right, we'll say this about a couple other places. When Auburn's right, that place is the toughest place to play. Um, as an Auburn fan, I would hope that, uh, you know, that intensity, the fans keep that intensity up for – Teams not Georgia and Alabama. Obviously, those are the two most important, but uh it'd be great to have it for every game. And I just don't I don't know that the juice is there for every game. Yeah, but for the big ones, it is. And yes. you know, like you said, I mean I was at that 2017 game. I don't want to say Auburn had no business winning that football game because they definitely did. They, they they were good enough to win the football game. It wasn't just based off of the crowd noise. But they, they were a team that was, you know, they were the wounded animal in the corner of the, the room. I mean, they, they they had to win to have any shot of keeping some serious postseason hopes alive. And they did that. And they did it two weeks, you know, later. Uh, so I, I think that when you look at this place, um, also, too, people are going to get frustrated. You got to go experience it. You know, and, and I, we haven't been to every place on this list, but Auburn's one of those environments that's just not fun as an opposing fan. I mean, it's just not fun. I mean, look, I'm not going to hide a secret here. A I was wearing me. red and black at that game. <laughs> yeah, I was wearing red and black that game. Well, I was in the top of the stands. It was about 12 degrees, it felt like, at the top at the it stands compared to maybe 50 cold. on the field. It was so cold. <laughs> and you just have, you know, Auburn fans barking back at you. It, it, it's fun. It's a lot of fun. It's a good atmosphere. And uh, I don't I don't blame you for putting it there in number four because I think it's it's one of the better ones in the country. Probably more underrated on a national scale. Uh, obviously, we have a yeah, little bias. I think so. You know, I so. think so. Um, you know, just to 
play off your Sunday school analogy you used before. Example, like I've been to plenty of Auburn Mississippi State games. Those are usually easy tickets to get. A lot of times those games feels like a Sunday school, you know, atmosphere. Mm. So if Auburn could get the juice up for games like that, they would probably be higher on the list, even for me. Um, yeah. But yeah, it's it's a place you got to experience if you've never experienced it. All right, we're going to roll on to my number four. I'm taking a step outside the SEC footprint here, and I've never been, but obviously you hear things and then kind of looking at what they've been able to do recently. And and really, truly, me, in my opinion, thinking that Oregon is about to establish themselves as one of the elite programs in college football. When I say that, I'm talking about like where Georgia, Alabama, Ohio State have been. Um, You know, Michigan crashed the party last year. I don't think year in, year out that they are one of those programs. But look, I I think, you know, Oregon does not have a massive stadium, like in terms of straight up numbers, Will. But when you look at what they've done, the excitement level that place is, uh, you watch the games. I mean, those those fans are rabid. They're about to join the Big Ten. Um, They've got some really, really fun games coming up, you know, on their schedule. I, I just think with what Oregon has accomplished, maybe the same thing, Dan Lanning getting there. Um, and really, it was a tough place to play when Chip Kelly was the head coach, and I feel like it fell off. Like, I feel like Oregon just kind of fell off a little bit. Mario Cristobal is there, okay, whatever, whatever. They get Dan Lanning, and it's like that same effect. It's like the Lanning effect for Oregon. And I'm excited to see what they bring to the table because I, I think this is a program that is about to skyrocket, and I think that they are one of the few programs. And, Will, I don't know if you have the – what is their capacity? What is Oregon's capacity? Austin uh, Stadium there. The internet says 54,000, which is the, like minuscule compared to the other ones we're talking about. Ex- exactly. <laughs> and for that place to be one of the tougher places to play in college, I think it's a result of the landing effect and how loud those fans make a stadium that feels like it's just 54,000 or that there's just 54,000. I think that you easily could walk in there and immediately feel like, hey, there's 80 plus thousand people in yeah. this place and, and they're going nuts. So I got Oregon, uh, not too much more on that, but I got Oregon number four. Now you talked you talked earlier about the structure, <clears throat> how these stadiums are built. That one is definitely built to kind of trap that noise. Yeah, um, it's called the Altson Zoo for a reason. Uh, they go wild out there in Eugene. They do. Um, Ohio State and Washington are coming to Eugene this year. So that's gonna be a fun one mm. uh, there to watch. They have not lost at home um, since Washington beat them in twenty twenty two there at home. So. There we go. All right, Will, you're number three, which is uh, – I'm just going to say this. I cannot wait to be down there for this game, LSU-Florida, this year because I want to be absolutely proven wrong in my thoughts on uh, kind of what the Swamp is. Yeah, when you were mentioning them earlier, I, my first thought back was that the shoe game, LSU-Florida. <laughs> I mean, that that was a fun game to watch on TV. It was foggy. The weather was crazy. Florida – really had no business being in that game and they come out and win it um at ben hill griffith stadium 88,548 capacity 49 home wins since 2013 a low number especially to be number three on my list um but you just know how loud it gets there yeah. they've struggled a lot the last decade you know but they they're still looking for that that head coach to get them back to to national prominence um, they thought they had it there for a second with Dan Mullen because Auburn went down there. What was that? 2018, 2019? Oh, 2019. 2019. 2019. Oh, one of those years. Um, and Auburn just looked flat the whole game. They struggled with the, with the crowd. They struggled with how loud the stadium was and the way that stadium is built. It, it feels like those fans are right on top of you. Um, it's, yeah. it's a really great environment. One that I hope to experience, uh, one day, um, but they're just really loud. And, and you know, I think we've said it before, when Florida is near the top, it's better for college football. And one of the reasons is the environment they create. When they play, I won't back down by Tom Petty to start the fourth mm-hmm. quarter. I don't know if you've seen the videos. Uh, it's have. nuts. Like, that is that is really, really cool. And I think it's one of the better. Um, well, I think it know, potentially I mean, be one of the be- Florida can be the best, toughest place to play in the country. They just got to be better on the field. Mm-hmm. You know, since we're talking about them, I've got to make a dig at Georgia. That's why they're scared to go play down there. They they stop in Jacksonville. They get almost to Gainesville, but then they just stop. They're just scared to go down there and play in the swamp. I'd love to see that game be a home and home. By the way, I mean, I understand. I, I, I'd we love need, to be. I'd love to see it. We need every college football game should be played on campus, in my opinion. Yeah. Well, Maybe if you if you just spend any time around that stadium, 
in Jacksonville. And for one second, you're just like, please, God, send me back to <laughs> Gainesville or Athens. Um, but I do enjoy that game. I've been, been there down there too. So that's number three. Will's got Florida at number three. The only reason Florida's not in my top five is just on the field right now. Um, I think they have the potential to be a top three, like you said, but they're just – not there for me currently. I, I like I said, I think Auburn is a tougher place to play right now than Florida is. But hey, that could change this year. Probably not, but uh we'll see. <laughs> All right, this one's gonna be unpopular. And I know it is because people say that it's like a very vanilla. Nick Saban used to get really upset. Well, I, I always said, well, it's just because Alabama's good. And then I was at the Alabama LSU game. And that is the craziest atmosphere I've ever been a part of in my life. And I know it's a big time game. And so maybe you're sitting there saying, Bryce, you were spoiled, big time atmosphere. And, and I might be, I might be completely. But for big games, they have they have really transformed and just talking with people, they have transformed what game atmospheres are like in Tuscaloosa. Uh, in terms of big game atmospheres, obviously light shows. I mean, that's what people like nowadays. Alabama has that, um, you know, it, it, it was a lot of fun standing on the sideline for the final five minutes of that game. It, it was nuts. Like I have so many videos. It's the craziest atmosphere I've ever been in, in person. Um, yeah, of course it's Alabama LSU, like one of the best games you're going to get every single year. So maybe I'm spoiled in that sense, but I think when you combine how I think they've improved, because I, I think Alabama was very much a, um, very much a just like oh, okay this team's so good like whatever type of thing i think it's gotten better and we're gonna see how it you know, plays with kaylin DeBoer this year but i think alabama is a tough place to go win a football game based on what they have done and how on the field and then based how just you know how that place has gotten crazy the students i think have upped the ante a little bit uh they did some reconfiguration in the stadium too which makes it really really loud um, I know Ralph, he's not with us today. He's still alive. He's not with us today. <laughs> but uh, he went to a game and he said it's terrible. But I think it's because he went to when they played like Southern Miss or something like that. So, yeah, um, yeah. I think big time games, it's really hard to go win there. Yeah, they definitely get up for big games. No doubt about it. Um, you know, just Auburn hadn't won there since 2010. The the greatest comeback I've ever seen, Twenty down 24 to nothing on the road. Um, but you know, I don't have them in my top five partially because like the smaller games, it's like, they just don't care about, um, yeah. and, and I wonder too, and I'm, I'm with you. I'm interested, interested to see how it changes now without mm -hmm. Nick Saban. Cause I think a lot of it was just the intimidation. Like, you know, you, I was like, Oh my gosh, we're playing yes. Alabama. They're so good. And, and teams yeah. crack under pressure like that. So if that's not there anymore, it'll be interesting to see. Um, and just got to see what they look like, but it can definitely get loud. They've got plenty of, they pack plenty of people in there. Um, but it seems to only be for the big games. Yeah, no, you're exactly right. I think big game atmosphere and, and that fear factor, the intimidation factor, like you talked about, like you walk in there, there's Nick Saban. I mean, you know, there's all these great players. Does that change this year? And look, we can always revitalize this list and uh, bring it back to life and change it around. That's just how, how kind of how where I have them sitting. All right, we're down to you know two and two here, and um, I, well, I, I'm excited to I, I'm excited for this one because this is a fun. This is a, I've been I've been here before. This is fun, <laughs> and um, I was here when they weren't very good. So take it away. Yeah, so I've got Tennessee at number two, Neyland Stadium up in Knoxville. Capacity crowd, 101,000. I don't know that much more needs to be said. Tennessee's only got 55 home wins since 2013, but, again, they've been pretty bad on the field uh, prior to Josh Heupel, uh, including a loss to Georgia State. Um, some folks listening to this might need to uh, go watch film of that to make sure that doesn't happen to them this year. But, uh, mm -hmm. yeah, they've been, they've been bad on the field, but – you know, we talked about big games at Alabama. Big games at Tennessee are always loud, especially early on. Seen Georgia the last few years, they've gone up there and, and have have a little bit of problems in the first quarter, quarter and a half. Uh, obviously, they settle in, and because that's because they're just better than Tennessee on the field. But yeah, there's few. There's, in my opinion, only one other place that gets as loud or louder, and that's both of our number ones. Um, 
but Tennessee fans, they're great fans. They're they're as passionate as they come and they they are loud for every game. They're there for every game. They sell out nearly every game. Um, and they make a really fun environment. You saw the Alabama game two years ago. They finally beat Alabama for the first time in what nine, ten years. Um mm-hmm. and, and what that meant to them. So it's a great environment, tough place to play. It's it's an intimidating place to go because it, it it just I've seen pictures from on the field. It looks like it's so tall, you know, the, yeah. the upper decks coming up on both sides. Uh, it's, it's just an intimidating place to go play. I went to, and I want to make sure I get this right. They were coming off a loss to Texas A&M, I believe. Um, and they came back to play Alabama. And it was like the really good Josh Dobbs team that they had. Um, and they were, they were, they were psyched. Now Alabama ended up just beat the crap out of them, but, <laughs> That place is crazy. Um, I remember make, we parked across the bridge uh, from the river and walked. That's a sight. Like if you ever go to Knoxville for a game, you have to walk across the bridge. You got the Vol Navy down there. Um, I, I love Tennessee. Like I hands down would go to a game um, if, if I could. Like I, I would definitely hands down go to another game because I think that it is a rocking atmosphere and they're better. Um, and I will say this too. Yeah. When Georgia played up there a couple of years ago, um, kind of the knock was they were really bad. Georgia had gone up there and beat them like 45 to seven with Jake from, then they come back down and, um, obviously, you know, Tennessee gets better and they end up winning Georgia wins, but man, that atmosphere, I don't know if you've seen the night games where they line up in the T and they run out through the T that's nuts. Like that's, yeah. that's crazy. That's crazy. So I like Tennessee there at number two. I like it. That's a, that's a good thing. Not in my top five. I, I went with, um, there's some really good atmospheres in college football. There are. I, I went Big Ten again. Look, I know Penn State is – people hate on Penn State. People hate on James Franklin. Um, you know, here's my thing with Penn State. I know that maybe the record isn't amazing. I know that, you know, the the, team, the, the opportunity to beat big teams in that stadium hasn't been amazing. But once again, maybe I'm going off emotion, Will. If you're coming out of the tunnel and it is a whiteout game, and I'm just going off one specific event. A whiteout game in ha- game in Happy Valley, legit, might be one of the most intim- the most intimidating atmosphere in the country. And that look, everyone knows who number one is. I think for both of us, so we'll just kind of get this out of the way. LSU is hard. Like it's a tough place to play. We're going to talk about here in a second. As an opposing team walk in and play in that game, and everyone's seen the clip of you know Shea Patterson trying to get the snap off. We all know that stuff. Like I don't know, man. Like Penn State, I know they they don't win all the big games. That's the knock, but they're still a playoff contender. You know, in a twelve team playoff, and, and that's a like I I cannot wait to see the first playoff game at Penn State. Like that is going to be so much fun. Um, that's kind of all I have to say. I, I think it's strictly yeah. based off emotions for me, just because of that one opportunity to go beat somebody in a whiteout game. Yeah. So I don't have Penn State in my top five. Here's uh, some numbers on them in whiteout games, top home game, to, uh, games at home against top teams. Uh, they played fifteen or played. Well, they played nine nine whiteout games against top fifteen teams. They're two and seven. Hmm. Since James Franklin became the head coach, they're 12 and 27 against top 25 teams. So for me, I don't think teams are really scared to go play there. Yeah. I mean, sure, whiteout games are fun. I think the whiteouts are the one offs, but the, the non whiteout home games they have, I'm not the top teams. I don't think they're really intimidated by, by Beaver Stadium. Um, yeah. But like you said, they're whiteout. They do a really great drop, job of it. They make a great environment. Uh, but for me, I mean, they haven't won enough at home, and teams don't seem to be phased going there. Yeah, no, that's fair. I mean, look, I took you took logic, I took emotions. I mean, that's what I went off of. I went off of one clip of the Michigan game. I just think it's a really cool atmosphere. If we're talking atmosphere, I think that that's where you're going to see Penn State pushed up the list even more. Yes. But you had the numbers right there. I mean, they just don't win enough, you know. And and I get that. I, I guess I'm going strictly off atmosphere uh, for that. So, uh, yeah. All right, we're getting ready to do number one, Will. Um, yep. I mean, go ahead and let, is, let everybody know. Let everybody know. Check, I, the check hit the check hit the bank account. The check so. has hit. <laughs> the balance is there, um, folks. This is nuts. Like, I can't even. For everything from the tailgating to the 
pregame festivities to a live actual Bengal tiger standing across the stadium. It, it's nuts. I mean, it is, I, I would say this, this is the best way to describe it. I've been to a lot of SEC football games. Um, I've been to a lot of bad ACC football games. Um, when I went to the, my first LSU game and was standing on the sideline, like it's just different. And that's what everyone says. Like, it's just a diff. it's a different level of intensity. Um, I haven't experienced LSU Alabama inside Tiger Stadium. I will experience that this year. But I experienced a bad Auburn team come into there. I experienced a bad Florida team come into there. And it was 100,000-plus people rocking. Um, Gator Chomp, um, I believe Jay Fair, and one of the other just putrid receivers that Auburn had last year came over to try to taunt the LSU student section. Um, when Neck gets going inside that stadium, there is nothing like it. If you don't know what Neck is, just YouTube it. If you're under five years old <laughs> or 12 years old, don't YouTube it. Um, I don't know, man. I mean, I know you've never been. I hope that you get the chance to maybe this year. It, it's nuts. It is nuts, nuts, nuts. Well, you know, I'll tell you this. As Auburn fan, big rivals with LSU. Mm -hmm. Shame that that game is not an annual contest. Yes, anymore, I, I, I don't know how to feel about this yeah. year. Not Auburn LSU not playing. That's so bizarre. Um, of the place of places where I would like or I would be willing. I don't even know if I would like to say I would like to, but be willing to go <laughs> as a visiting fan. LSU's at the bottom of that list. Uh, I've heard too many stories about bad experiences for for visiting fans. Um, They'll feed you on the way in, but once you get in, it's awful. Right? Yeah, it's 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 a totally different ball game. Um, got the live tiger. Got Mike the tiger. The live Bengal tiger is just an added element that makes it so much cool. It's I don't know of places that are better or more intimidating, louder, anywhere than LSU. Um, yeah. Like I said, I, I think I'd rather go to an Iron Bowl in Tuscaloosa than go to a, an Auburn LSU game at LSU. <laughs> I mean, that's fair. And, and I'll say this. We talked about roster or, or stadium construction. L LSU is unique in that they don't have a lot of tiers. So, you know, like people like yeah. – I'm trying to think of some other stadiums that just have like, okay, there's three decks, you know. Mm -hmm. LSU, especially on one end zone, is just one – Tall, like the old school stadium. It's, it's like a bowl. Yep. It is literally yep. one just all the way up, and it's full of students. And look, you know, we're, this is we're, – we're fine. We're not on, you know, public airwaves here. They've been inebriated since last week. I mean, I'm not even sure how many of these kids actually go to class. They've been in Tigerland, you know, all week. And then they and then they get ready for this game. You know, I mean, it's nuts. Ed Orgeron it's nuts. said it. Said it for, a, what, 11 a.m. kickoff. Put something in your coffee. I mean, it, it's – it's the whole it's culture different, and that man. it's different. It's, yeah. it's different. You know, uh, there's a reason why it took Auburn, what, 20 years to win a game in Baton Rouge. They didn't win from 1999 until they finally did it in what 2021. And that took a, you know, miraculous effort from, from Bo Nix to go win that football game. No, you're exactly right. And, and another thing too, is, you know, you talk about the tailgating experience, some amazing food, I, one thing that stuck out to me, and obviously I was going to put them at number one no matter what because the check cleared. But, you know, one thing that stood out to me was this past season, LSU loses to Alabama. This knocks them out of the SEC title race. They can't really do much. Uh, we know that they're just trying to fight. It's really become an opportunity for Jaden Daniels to go win the Heisman. Like, that's what every single media member knows. So we, we get down there for the Florida game. Uh, it's raining, which they're going to tell you it never rains uh, in, in Death Valley. Like, that's a whole thing. Um, but it does, and it's raining. Will the amount of fans with full size gators on their smokers and their grills <laughs> in pouring rain was nuts? And like that's just the dedication that you just you don't see everywhere. And this is why I encourage people who like if you're a fan of let's just say you're a fan of Georgia Tech, you're a fan of Virginia, you're a fan of Ole Miss, like take advantage and go to some of these atmospheres because it truly like. I, I'm glad, and like last year, and and I do want to add some honorable mentions, just places that maybe we've been or yeah. just places that we like here in a second. But just to kind of wrap it up, it's a tough place to play. Um, LSU is known for, not last year, just this like kind of just uh, this style of play that I would just – it's it's like just – this is going to sound so white when I say this, and I apologize. <laughs> it's like this just this like this – like LSU always has swag. 
Like they always got this like yeah. swagger to them where yeah. we may not be the most talented, but there's a chip on your shoulder because you're from Louisiana, you know, from the worst educated state in the union, you know, all this type of stuff where you're just sitting here trying to like make your mark somehow. And that's what a lot of these kids do. And, I, and I'm excited for this season and I'm excited for a home sleep that's going to include Ole Miss coming to town, UCLA, Oklahoma, and Alabama. It's a loaded, loaded home slate uh, for LSU. But that's kind of all I got on LSU. Um, do you want to move on to some, just a couple honorable mentions here yeah, before we we'll, uh, close we'll it out? Some, let's hit some honorable mentions. Okay, just a place I've been, um, and I think it's underrated. Two places. I put this on our Instagram and our social media the other day, Ole Miss. Uh, Ole Miss was nuts. Of course, it was an LSU game. But I think when you talk about smaller stadiums that do a really, really good job, Ole Miss has got to be up there. And I know some Tech fans were excited when they went last year to, to you know Oxford, Mississippi for that game. So I got Ole Miss, as I don't mention, and then just kind of one more for me. Mississippi State at night. LSU played them during the day, and it was nuts. But Mississippi State at night, like those fans have nothing else to do in Starkville. Like those, the, nobody has anything to do there. And so they just pack it out. The cowbells, obviously, a big part of that too. But those are two atmospheres that I think are kind of just often go o- overlooked on a national stage. And uh, well, if you say Vanderbilt, um, I'm probably going to walk <laughs> away from the show. But anyways, uh, just a couple honorable mentions from you. No, but I will go in the SEC. the 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 former S the old SEC East, uh, actually old ACC. Uh, hopefully, TriStar is listening. South Carolina Williams Bryce Stadium. Yeah. Um, they do a great job there. You know, it's, I think it's, it might be the most underrated in the SEC. Um, you know, I've got Georgia friends that they, they hate Sandstorm because of, because of South Carolina, but I think it's, it makes for a great atmosphere, a great environment. Seeing those towels waving and Sandstorm blaring on the speakers before, uh, before kickoff. Yeah. Um, and, it, you know, my second one, one we already talked about, Virginia Tech Lane Stadium. I mean, I, I hope Virginia Tech is is back this year, like a lot of people are talking them up to be back, um, because that place is makes a great environment. Inner yeah. Sandman, one of the be- better tradition, best traditions, uh, you know, field entrances for teams across the country um, makes it a lot of fun. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna add one more. Um, I will tell you, I'm I'm not. I'm sure that Ohio State, and Michigan are great atmospheres. I just, I don't know. I just, I can't speak to it, and I feel like I'd, it'd be dumb for me to try to speak to it and have never been there. So that'll be up for Doctor Bob to be able to do. Um, here's one. This is going to make a, the the largest portion of our fan base of our show really ticked off. The Bounce House, UCF. I think UCF is a would be a fun place to go watch a game at night. That place can yeah. get rowdy. Another small stadium that, uh, you know, they were really, really good. Scott Frost, they had some, you know, awesome years. I think Gus has, you know, given them more of a legitimacy in terms of we're, you know, we're moving to the Big 12. We're doing a lot of different things. Uh, you're now a Power 4 program. I think I, I know that they weren't good necessarily record-wise last year. I know that Georgia Tech beat them in a bowl game that, you know, no one cares this about. One, but this it's so a, it's a fun, it'd be a fun place to go watch a football game. Gus Malzahn does not care about bowl games. That's obvious. He yeah, doesn't care. Um but yeah, the bounce it'd be fun. Uh, you give you give Gus Malzahn a good enough team, a really great home field advantage. Anything can happen. I'm just saying, don't don't be surprised to see them in in Dallas at the end of the season. Don't be surprised. Don't be surprised to see him in a playoff. Why not? Why not? Yeah. I mean, um, I said it when they hired him, he'll he'll get him in the playoff. And I I still think that even if it was a 14 playoff, he would get them there. We didn't expand this to 10 teams because people were going to argue about teams 11, 12, 13, because that's just how this is going to work. That's how the college football playoffs going to work this upcoming season. Um, So, yeah, we're going to stop it right there at five. A couple of honorable mentions. Obviously, Oklahoma's the Texas of the world. Like, those are great atmospheres. But that's our top five uh, kind of overall. And so, uh, Will mentioned it. TriStar, Dr. Bob, we shout out to a couple people during the show. If you want to be a part of what we're doing, make sure you join the Discord. Make sure you uh, join the conversation. Great conversation currently happening as we're recording this about uh, you know just great college football content. So make sure you join that. And uh, if you're listening through Believe, through Spotify, Apple, wherever you might be getting this, we appreciate you as well. Make sure you subscribe to that feed. It's completely free. And then finally, on the YouTube channel, hit that sub button, like the video, and share down below. What is your top five? Are we complete morons? We might be. But uh, 
that's okay. We stand by that. Uh, we will catch you next time here on the Crowded Booth. Pile in here and make yourself feel at home. The Crowded Booth is coming on. The Crowded Booth with Bryce Coons.